All righty, let's do it then. Um, so welcome everyone to the, uh, just the third or the fourth now, uh, Gnosis DAO community call. Um, I'm Oren, thanks for joining. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. We've got a, a bit of a packed schedule today, so we wanna make sure that we can get through it. Um, so uh, a couple of things on the agenda, uh, essentially a <laughs> update for the uh, Gnosis improvement proposals that are uh, live right now. We've got a handful of them. Uh, they really are critical for getting the uh, Gnosis style uh, essentially up and running, getting it activated. Uh, so yeah, very much appreciate everyone showing up today to uh, to listen in and, and would appreciate even more so if you could, uh, after the chat, go ahead and vote on those proposals if you have not already. Um, so we'll dive in, uh, just a, a quick kind of overview again on, on what the Gnosis DAO is, why we're all here. Um, essentially, the, the Gnosis DAO is uh, the DAO that will be kind of stewarding the Gnosis ecosystem uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, and so uh, this is this is kind of our opportunity to, to gather and, and chat and just uh, kind of get up to date on uh, all things Gnosis DAO and Gnosis ecosystem. Um, the Gnosis DAO will have uh, control or effective control over uh, essentially what was the, the treasury uh, for Gnosis, so 150,000 Ether, 8 million GNO tokens uh, vested over eight years, and uh, essentially help to, to steward the uh, Gnosis ecosystem, uh, the, the kind of roadmaps for each of the, uh, the kind of products within that ecosystem. Uh, and the, the kind of guiding principle here is, you know, what if the what if a community could share in uh, an entire ecosystem success? Uh, so this is kind of an ecosystem controlled by you, uh, or owned by you. Uh, today we're we're trying something out new. We have uh, PO apps for uh, attendees. Um, why we essentially just want to reward the Gnosis DAO community for uh, showing up and participating in these calls. Uh, each badge is unique and might lead to future surprises, uh, and it help us, helps us uh, essentially separate uh, you know, the people that are actively involved with the Gnosis DAO uh, and the Gnosis community from uh, those just kind of uh, that are along for the ride. Um, so head into the Gnosis DAO channel uh, between these times, and you can find the POAP bot, shoot it a DM, and uh, use this magic word, safe apps to claim your PO app. Uh, so now let's jump into the uh, deep dives. Also, I guess on the PO apps, if you have any questions, uh, always feel free to ask over in the Gnosis DAO uh, channel. Uh, yeah, so deep dives, let's talk about uh, first GIP 10 adopt participation agreement. So over the last couple of months, uh, we've put a ton of work into creating a participation agreement um, for the Gnosis DAO. Uh, and this has been a real prerequisite for us um, prior to uh, the, the Gnosis DAO really being able to become active. Um, the, 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 I guess like really high level goal uh, of this uh, participation agreement is to uh, provide kind of an operating framework for the Gnosis DAO uh, that uh, specifies the, the rights and obligation that each of the parties uh, that are participating in the Gnosis DAO have to, to one another. Uh, and I think in, in uh, more kind of layman's speak, uh, that's essentially uh, trying to, to create an environment where um, it's, it's very obvious kind of what the Gnosis DAO is uh, and, and uh, what, uh, what participating in it means for you in terms of um, your liabilities to one another as participants. Uh, and, and your liabilities to the kind of uh, or, or any kind of liabilities that you kind of incur from that participation. Uh, so this participation agreement, the the intent is that um, anyone who is kind of actively participating in the Gnosis DAO, including uh, but not necessarily limited to uh, things like creating proposals, uh, voting on proposals, uh, should uh, explicitly be a party to this agreement, and, and essentially should have to uh, uh, kind of sign uh or digitally sign uh to acknowledge that they are accepting the the terms of this participation agreement uh, and so that's what this proposal is all about and it's a um again a really really key part to the gnosis dao being able to really become active and start to uh to take on that steward role for the gnosis ecosystem 
uh, and then the the following uh, proposal GIP eleven to enable safe snap. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, this is the one that uh, really takes this um, takes the kind of practical step to actually kind of enabling the the Gnosis DAO. Uh, so the the participation agreement kind of sets up the um, the kind of agreement on uh, on in principle between um, participants and then this uh, safe snap proposal actually gives the the Gnosis DAO via uh, snapshot effective control over the Gnosis safe which is which holds the uh, the Gnosis DAO's assets uh, and ultimately will kind of control uh, systems uh, and be the, the kind of referenced address for the the Gnosis DAO. Um, in terms of what it actually controls as of right now, uh, it has the the eight million GNO that we uh, mentioned earlier vesting uh, into a contract that it controls, uh, and it will control the uh, gnosis.eth ENS name uh, along with uh, whatever else it decides to uh, to control. Uh, and this is the address that um, the one hundred fifty thousand ether uh, should be uh, deposited to, or should should eventually end up in. So. Um, yeah, essentially this this uh, proposal enables the snapshot instance to take effective control over that. Uh, again, a, a really important one. So if you haven't gone through and voted yet, uh, please take the opportunity after this call to check that out. Um, and I guess before we go into uh, this next uh, proposal deep dive, I would love to hear any questions. Uh, if anyone has questions on uh, GFP 10 or GFP 11, uh, anyone needs any clarification or anything like that, now's a, a good breaking point. So feel free to uh, unmute yourself, dive in, and, uh, and um, yeah, happy to, to try to provide clar uh, clarification. If not, then we can uh, progress on, and I'll hand over to, uh, I think John is going to take over from here, if I recall. Yeah, sounds good to me, Oren. Maybe we, uh, I don't know, I need the, the Jeopardy music or something just to give a little bit of background while we wait for some questions, but it sounds like no one's chiming in. So, uh, John, I'll hand over to you. Do you want me to uh, carry on with the slides or do you want to take the wheel? No, what I can do is let me share my desktop here. Can people see my screen here? Uh, I'm going to stop mine, and then that will probably make yours the primary one. Cool. Is that coming through, Arn? Uh, that is. Perfect. Cool. Great. Carry on. Yeah. So yeah, thanks, Arn, for that. Um, hi everyone. Happy to be on another Nosa Style community call. And uh, going to give a quick update on where we're at with Safe Apps and the Nosa Safe. Um, we've been pushing, you know, quite a quite hard in the last um, year updating the Gnosis safe as well as updating, you know, the uh, the number of safe apps we have at our disposal. So, um, yeah, I'm just excited to give an update as, as well as a quick kind of sneak peek into what we have in terms of layer two rollouts and what we see the future of safe apps going forward as we roll out to these networks. Just to get everybody on the same page, what do I mean by safe apps? Um, I'm talking about, you know, third party apps that have integrated with the Gnosis safe that enable the Gnosis Safe users to interact with these applications directly from the Gnosis Safe. Why is that good? That's good because you know we don't have to rely on you know various different wallet connectors such as Wallet Connect, and um, that get a lot of volume at times. We've seen that in the past two days. Um, so instead, we can just simply connect up uh, your Gnosis Safe wallet directly with these various different applications within the Safe uh, web interface, and that's just ultimately a smoother experience. We can leverage some benefits such as transaction batching, which smart contract wallets enable. And of course, probably the most important at the end of the day, right? You can always rely on your multi-sig security, your multi-sig policy, um, when your safe owners are interacting with these safe apps, which I think is super important, especially for the team use case as well as the DAO use case. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But yeah, uh, the best the best update I can give uh, would be for you to just navigate to the Gnosis Safe and check the app, what apps are available at the t like right now. But I've also kind of curated them into these kind of categories, uh, which are all live at the moment in our main Net Gnosis Safe. 
And yeah, I think you can see very much we have a very much DeFi focus. A lot of lending protocols uh, are offered now on, as safe apps. We have the likes of Aave, V2, we have Compound, we have um, you know Balancer as well, which is great. And then we have also the new liquidity pools that you know we can get some tasty APYs off, like with the likes of your involves curve, um, even one inch has pools now um, and pool together. So. It's looking good uh, for you know the likes of we're seeing a big primitive happening, which is significant DAOs with significant amounts of treasuries uh, that don't want to simply entrust one person to manage their whole treasury using a MetaMask account. Right? It's we're seeing this primitive now that DAOs are actually you know allowing their treasury managers to man- manage from the da- uh, from the DAOs um, notice safe. And, you know, adhering to the multi-sig policy so they can do all these crazy, you know, um, investments while still adhering to the policy, right? Which is, you know, three out of five, uh, five out of ten, right? So it's just a more secure way to manage treasuries. And definitely there's a lot of examples that are happening right now with that. But, of course, um, on the, we also have some other uh, interesting apps with regard to uh, asset management, so, such as Wallet Connectors, such as InstaDap. DeFi Saver and Free Combo, where you can create very intricate DeFi transactions and um, you know get another portfolio view of your safe and or even uh, other wallets as well. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about what other ones can come and of course, just getting to grips with everything that's available right now. Last thing to touch on about a trend in safe apps is, and you'll see this more um, more often, you can see in the top bottom right, we see the XDAI bridge. We've now enabled the XDAI bridge to be available on our Safe Apps mainnet instance. Um, and it's also available on XDAI, uh, the XDAI Safe app, uh, the, the XDAI Safe Apps as well. And as we roll out to new networks, uh, such as Polygon, such as Binance Smart Chain, we'll also be enabling those bridges as well as Safe Apps. So do keep in mind that you know, you're going to be seeing some more bridges as we roll out to more networks. And enable you know safes to deploy funds on various different safes on different networks more easily. So that's essentially yeah. This is the latest view we have with safe apps. We have about thirty two now safe apps. Um, but what we're going to dedicate a lot of time to now is getting more apps on more networks, and also we're going to create these apps in a, in a better fashion. So you know the app you want will be available to you in a quicker amount of time, right? All enabling, you know, a smoother kind of user experience. So I can, you know, if I'm very much a, a lending, <laughs> a, a safe use for treasury um, management, right, that we will have, that you will be able to, you know, access those, uh, those apps in a more, you know, with better discoverability, right? But going, going on into the future, um, we, we like to think of ourselves as, you know, an, an, app, an app store per se, but an app store on different networks and an app store that has some key details, right? The key differences with Apple's app store, right? We want to reinvent ourselves as um, an app store that's free for all users with free apps to use and leverage. We always want it to be multi-sig enabled so we can enable this that secure flow. We want to be censorship resistant. We want to remove Gnosis as the gatekeeper of these safe apps and truly let this be you know, um, you know, an, a curation point for Ethereum protocols and Ethereum applications. And we don't want to be the one that says yes or no to these apps. And lastly, yeah, probably the most exciting is that we want to be built for EVM compatible chains. So instead of having instead of having, you know, your Android app store, your Apple app store, you have, you know, you have a safe apps, you have a safe app store for Polygon, a safe app store for um, Ethereum mainnet, Binance Smart Chain, Arbitrum, Optimism, the list goes on. And we want to be that kind of focal point for these, uh, for our safe users when they're interacting with their various different apps. Um, quickly, just to touch on, if anybody's, if any, if anybody hasn't read this article, um, this is just a touch on our multi-chain strategy. It's detailed and on our medium. Just Google the uh, Gnosis Safe multi-chain future. But to summarize, we just want to make Gnosis Safe and Safe apps available on these EVM compatible networks. And we don't want to leave these users behind who want to have access to, you know, um, you know, very, you know, uh, easily easily accessible <laughs> apps that have low gas fees, right? We don't want to cut off that user base, and that's why we want to deploy on these uh, on these networks that enable that with Ethereum. And yeah, to uh, 
to summarize, right, we will be deploying now um, in early July, in the first two weeks of July, we're going to kind of do a bundle deployment, right, with Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, and Arbitrum all deployed in and around the same time in the first two weeks of July. And we're very much excited about this, and we we we're, we're going to be letting that letting applic- letting various projects know about uh, you know that we will that we are very much plan to integrate with them for safe apps, and we also employ anybody that you know any requests you guys have simply get on to the the relevant project or reach out to us that we can uh, that we can make that happen and get those projects integrated with safe apps. And yeah, with and in terms of integrating as a safe app we have Haman on the line as well that he's going to give us a uh, a quick demo to how how easily we can convert these a regular dap to a safe app in a you know in a, in a quick way that we have made quite easy because of the wrappers we've created so Haman, i'd love to pass it on to you now if you'd like to uh to demo. thank you very much so hello everyone i will share my screen Okay, so here we are. Uh, we have the Safe Apps SDK uh, Mono Repo on GitHub. And this offers us a couple of developer tools that we can use in order to build a, a Safe App. Here we can uh, see a decision tree on which uh, which packets inside this mono repo we can use depending on our setup in our existing app. If we are using uh, onboard on or web3 model, get uh, the provider of our wallet, it will be it will be very easy. Especially for the onboard JS. Here I, I, I'm on Ringaby in our web interface, the app section, and I created three uh, demo apps. This one uh, is using onboard. Is the the default one onboard JS is using to show how it works. And here you see that uh, I just open it and my safe is loaded. This happens because we are now integrated with onboard JS. And uh, if we load, for example, this app that I uploaded somewhere. We can uh, we can see the onboard JS uh, model where we can choose our preferred wallet. And here we are the NOSI safe. If we try to open here, it won't work because it expects us to be inside our website. And if we are using it in our website, it will connect automatically. So uh, if we are using onboard JS integration, it's done. We are using uh, what's your model instead. Then we have a wrapper inside the mono repo, uh, a specific package that is called Safe Apps Web3 Model. And I have here code that you would need to modify. So uh, here on the left, we see the, the status of our app when using Web3 Model. And we see the the modifications we need to do, and they will be very uh, little. So instead of importing what's your model, we we'll need to uh, import our wrapper, the Safe Apps Web3 model, that gives us the class Safe Apps Web3 model. And here, uh, instead of instantiating the Web3 model class, we will do it with the Safe Apps uh, Web3 model. And lastly, instead of calling the method connect, we need to call the method request provider. This method we, uh, will try to connect to, the, to our safe. And if it doesn't work, it will fall back to the connect usual method. That's why it works inside the web app, inside the safe web UI, and it doesn't work outside. So easy to. If we are not using onboard JS or Web3 model, then we can be using uh, Web3 React. If we are, we have a package here in our repo that is called Safe Apps Web3 React, and this uh, package offers us the Safe App connector. 
this connector follows the the API convention of Web3 React, like the one the like all the connectors uh, they provide. We have our for the safe, and it also offers uh, a hook use safe app connection that will be used to uh, connect automatically to the to our safe. So it's also very easy to use. And the last uh, option we have is that if we are not using any of these things, then we can use the safe apps provider. In the safe apps provider, I have here another app, this one, will load automatically with the information of uh, the safe I have open. If I try to load this app outside of our web UI, you see that it, it's waiting for the for the save, but it's not working. The code of for this uh, example the app is here. It is a very simple one where we are uh, loading the safe app provider from the safe apps provider package. And uh, we need to instantiate this class passing the, an object, it's a safe info, and the safe apps SDK. These two parameters, uh, we can get them from the hook use safe apps SDK. And uh, this comes from a different package inside the monorepo too, the safe apps. React SDK, and for this to work, we need in the root of our app to uh, include the safe provider. It receives a loader, as you saw before. This is shown. Uh, meanwhile, we are waiting for the. Sorry, I think. Um, this is something that is uh, shown on the interface if the safe is not the safe data is not received or if we are running outside our web interface the app will be uh, loaded once we receive this data uh, so once we instantiate the safe app provider we can pass this to the web3 provider method from ethers and we receive a web3 provider inside our app that you can that we can use everywhere to interact with contracts also uh, we have the safe info object that has for example uh, the safe address and some more data of the safe then we have the sdk that we can use for example for uh, sending transactions we we can call uh, sdk.transactions.send and pass uh, an array of transactions and this would result in something like this where the uh, the model of the NOSI safe is open and we can send them and that's basically it we have uh, four different options we have uh, an already existing app we try to make them the easier as possible and if you have any doubt just please reach to us and we will be there. Thanks very much for that, Herman. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, about safe apps uh, while we have Herman here, that's uh, a great opportunity to, to uh, get those answered. Um, I have one that's slightly unrelated uh but it's kind of tangentially related to the safe that i literally just asked richard in a dm so maybe we can start with that if uh, if no one else has any um i i was just asking about um generating safes with the same address on different networks uh, i believe that's something that uh will be more easily achievable with the uh, newer version um maybe uh yeah, I don't know. If, if anyone here has an answer on that, then uh, I'll, I'll totally 
uh, sidetrack us to talk about that, but otherwise we can, uh, we can carry on. Uh, and if anyone else who's listening has any other more relevant questions, then we can, uh, we can do those instead. Um, and I guess maybe before we do go getting sidetracked uh, too much, I'll just share my screen one more time just for the, the kind of closing um, slide here. Uh, yeah, it, I guess thanks everyone for, uh, mm-hmm. for, for showing up and, and taking part in the, uh, in the Nurses Tower community call. Um, remember to go and grab your uh, PO app your, uh, by, by dropping the safe apps magic mm-hmm. word to the PO app bot over in the Notice Tower uh, channel. Uh, again, that uh, magic word is safe apps. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see you all next time. Um, again, if, uh, if anyone has any questions, now is a, uh, a great time to, to speak up in chat. Uh, otherwise, you can always drop your questions over in uh, the text-based chat in the Gnosis Dow channel and someone uh, will we'll try to get an answer to you. So yeah, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day uh, and the rest of your week. Oh, and go vote on GIP 10 and 11. All right, bye everyone.